Hey everybody, this is Anthony with VR Game Rankings and you are tuned in to the Daily Vlog Series. It is Friday, February 2nd. This is episode 90 and we are ready for another show. This is the final show of this week and we do have quite a bit of news stories. So why don't we just go ahead and jump right into the news. Now, the number one story of the day is if you are looking to pick up an HTC Vive, you might be able to get $100 off your HTC Vive. You might be able to grab the HTC Vive retail package for $499. I believe this is the lowest we've ever seen the standard Vive package go for without being in some kind of special deal. Now, this, of course, is at the Microsoft Store. This is only available at physical locations of the Microsoft Store. This might only be a USA thing as well. And this is a little bit your mileage may vary because right now we only have reports from one individual person that this is in effect, but they have gone to a Microsoft store and purchased an HTC Vive for $499. And supposedly this sale is running through the Super Bowl weekend. So if you're looking to grab yourself an HTC Vive in the very near future, you probably want to pause this show right now, hop in your car, and drive over to your nearest Microsoft store and see if they have an HTC Vive in stock and go ahead and grab one of those puppies for $499.99. Not necessarily a bad deal, especially, honestly, this deal is starting to look better and better, especially as we hear that the HTC Vive Pro is going to be this premium item that is going to cost so much money. So this could be a great deal if you're looking to pick up an HTC Vive. Story number two, the Oculus free weekend series continues. Yes, this appears to be a trend that is going on for the Oculus Rift and on the Oculus Store. We've seen this repeatedly every single weekend. There seems to be a new game that is free and available to all Oculus Rift owners over the weekend. And this is a great promotional idea. This is a great concept. Of course, this started a number of weeks ago with raw data. Then the, the week after raw data, it was from other suns. And then of course, last week we had Onward. And so it's a great chance for Oculus Rift owners to be able to try all these new, uh, all these different games that maybe you haven't tried before. You can download the full game. You can play the full game for a couple of days so you can get a very good feel for it. And this week we have Spark, CCP game Spark. And Spark is a game, I played this on PlayStation VR. I did get a code from CCP games for the PlayStation VR version of Spark. I'm a huge fan of Spark. I really like this game on the PlayStation VR. Now you got to remember when it hit PlayStation VR, it was a little bit of an exclusivity window. It didn't come to the PC VR platforms until a little bit later. And I remember when I was playing Spark, I couldn't help but think how much better the experience might be on something like an Oculus Rift, especially the Oculus Rift with the touch controllers because the way the game Spark is, inside the actual VR game, it's almost like you're wearing Oculus Rift controllers, the way the game is kind of designed. So I really feel that the game would work very well with Oculus Rift controllers, the better tracking, not having to deal with the move controllers every once in a while not being tracked properly. So if you have never tried Spark, if you are an Oculus Rift owner, you absolutely owe it to yourself to go ahead and download this game. Give it a try. I can tell you right now, I am going to download this myself, even though I have the PSVR version. I definitely want to check this out on the Oculus Rift, and I will try to jump in there this weekend so you might see VR game rankings in Spark on the Oculus Store sometime this weekend if you're playing this game. Okay, story number three is Fallout 4 has reached the 100,000 sales plateau. Now, when I first saw this news title hit the Vive subreddit or the Oculus subreddit, wherever I happened to see it, I was like, Fallout 4 has 
100,000 owners. And I thought, that's it? I thought, well, it should be a lot more, right? But actually, if you think about it, we have to remember that Fallout 4 is a full price game. This is a $59.99 game. And in the world of VR gaming, we don't have very many $59.99 games. Most of the very high end VR games are $39.99. We don't really see games jump all the way into the $59.99 price. Fallout 4, of course, is an exception to that rule. And so when you consider that price, when you also consider that there never has been official native Oculus Rift support either. So there are a number of Oculus Rift owners that are probably leery of trying to get this game running on their Rift, even though they know that plenty of people are playing it on their Rift. Some people are like, ah, it's not available on, you know, it's not officially available for the Oculus Rift. I'm not going to buy it. Some people make that decision as well. And then the other thing is the demanding minimum requirements are pretty hefty. There's a lot of people out out there with lower spec PC rigs that maybe feel they can't run Fallout 4 properly. Plus, you combine that with the high price, you combine that with the fact that it doesn't natively support Oculus Rift. And I think when we consider all of these factors, 100,000 owners of Fallout 4 VR is actually not that bad of a deal for Bethesda Game Studios. I think they're probably relatively happy with this type of sales because you have to remember not everybody out there is into this open world style of game. There is a certain segment of the population that just isn't interested in open world style gaming. In fact, Steve from VR Roundtable fame, he said a number of times before, he's not really into the open world genre and he really wasn't a Fallout guy. Now he did try Fallout 4 VR and he's actually fallen quite in love with the game. You can hear hear him tell it your, uh, himself on a number of episodes of VR Roundtable, he says that he's definitely started to really appreciate what Fallout 4 brings to the table, but you definitely do have this segment of population that kind of avoids these open world games. They don't really do it for them. So considering all of these factors, the fact that this game has hit 100,000 sales, that is a good sign. Now, of course, this is not official information by any stretch of the imagination. This is coming from the website Steam Spy, and we're not absolutely sure that these results are 100% legitimate. Alrighty, I'd like to get into a little bit of game discussion before we close out the show. Now, of course, yesterday I was talking about a brand new game that hit Steam Early Access, and of course I am talking about In Death. Now, this game is coming to us from Soulfar Studios. They are the developers of Everest VR. This is their first VR game as far as I'm aware and it hit early access yesterday. You can go ahead and pick up this game for $17.99. Now this is a slight discount that is celebrating the launch of this game. It will eventually return to its normal price of $19.99. I reached out to SoFar Studios yesterday and asked them if it was possible, could I get a review code for the game? And they were nice enough to hook me up with a review code. And I tried playing the game last night. I have the Oculus Rift version of the game. I played it last night for quite a bit of time and I actually played it today as well. So I do have some game time in this game. However, I will caution you, this is not a review. This is not a final review or a final take. I've only put so much time into the game, but I can give you my first impressions and what I think about this game. Now, the interesting thing about this game is it's really hard for me to come up with a really final conclusion about whether or not I should recommend this game, recommend you guys pick this up, or whether I should recommend that you guys avoid this game. This one is in between. There is not a clear-cut decision here. First of all, what type of game is this? Well, this is a bow hunting kind of a game, a bow shooting game. Basically, you are a um, you are an archer, 
in this game and you're going to be shooting arrows and you're going to be moving through these medieval castles and you're going to be battling uh, an assortment of various enemies. This is a roguelike game. So if you die, you pretty much kind of start over and you're kind of starting over from scratch each time if you allow yourself to die all the way. Now, bottom line, when I'm in this game, I will say the graphics do look pretty damn good. So starting off on the good side, I, I would say the graphics look good. These guys made Everest VR. And in this game, we're talking about medieval castles. We're talking about... Um, Basically, that's pretty much what you're in here. You're in these medieval castles. I believe a lot of the game assets are procedurally generated, so you can spend a lot of time in these levels. They continue for a long time. However, the levels that I've been in so far, everything kind of starts looking the same after a while. So if I was going to go negative from the standpoint of the graphics, I would say eventually everything just starts blurring into itself. And if you've seen one long uh, hallway, if you've seen one medieval castle, you've kind of seen them all. At least that's what I've seen so far with these game, with this game. The other thing I have to talk about is the enemies. So far, I've only seen maybe three or four different enemy types, and the enemies are very cookie cutter. They kind of repeat over and over ad nauseum. So basically, like like when you're first in the game, you'll see these guys. They're wearing cloaks. You can't see their face. They kind of look like death. You know, the uh, the standard version, like the, the Grim Reaper is kind of what they look like. They have these hoods and these guys are archers and they're going to shoot their arrows at you. Now, from a combat standpoint, you basically have your bow and arrow capability where you can shoot your bows. You also can hit your left trigger and that will activate your shield. So you can go from having a bow to immediately having a shield. And what you're going to notice in the gameplay of this game is you're going to be fighting enemies. You're going to be shooting your arrows at enemies, and then you quickly need to switch to the shield and then shoot an arrow, quickly switch to the shield, shoot an arrow, quickly switch to the shield. You're going to have to do that a little bit to be able to survive in this game long enough. You can also, with your other hand, you can kind of grab this shard, which will allow you to sidestep to the left or right really quickly to kind of dodge incoming attacks as well. And going back to the enemy types, like I said, your original, uh, at the beginning, you're basically battling these guys that kind of look like the Grim Reaper. All of them are absolutely identical. Their animations are absolutely identical. They make the exact same noise every time you first startle them. It takes a number of shots to take these guys out. The actual bow mechanics are pretty good. That is one of the good parts of this game. But going back to the enemies, you've got these Grim Reaper guys. And then you have, of course, the Brookhaven zombies. I mentioned this on yesterday's show that we saw the Brookhaven zombies, these generic zombies that you can get in Unreal Engine, they are in this game. Now, they don't look exactly like the Brookhaven zombies. They've been altered a little bit. Their faces are a little bit different. Their coloration is definitely a little different, but they're basically the same thing. You also get these guys where they have a shield over their head. They're kind of like uh, crusaders that, that you're battling. They have swords, they have shields, or they might have arrows themselves as well. And basically, all these enemies are pretty much cookie cutter style enemies. They don't have very complex AI routines. The enemies are probably one of the weakest aspects of this game. In fact, if I were to go to the absolute worst aspect of this game, it's the fact that you will be going down one of these medieval hallways. You'll turn a corner, you'll look into a room, and you'll see about five or six enemy characters in the room and they are basically turned around and they're twiddling their thumbs. They're basically waiting for you to do something and as soon as they see you then they turn around and they start coming at you and it's almost like a director called out action and then it's like they're they're actors. They're waiting around. They're just like, okay, I'm going to wait around here. Oh, there's the, there's the bad guy. You know, let's, let's go get him or there's the hero. Let's go after them. They're pretty much waiting around for you to show up in that room and then they activate and so they're just kind of twiddling their thumbs and that definitely is not a good look for this game so if you're looking for advanced ai and enemies that have some type of intelligence 
this is not the game for you. Now, I've said a lot of negative things about this game. So is this game just complete and utter garbage? And I can't say that either because you know what? The more that I play this game, there is something of a comfort food element to this game. There's something about this game that is just kind of familiar. And yeah, it's very janky. There's a lot of things that'll kind of make you snicker and laugh about it. But at the same time, I still find myself kind of enjoying just going through the motions and killing these enemies. And one of the reasons I'm enjoying it is because you do get different arrow types that do different things. You get a an arrow that will allow you to freeze the enemy. And so you freeze them with ice and then you can shoot them a bunch more times. You get these triple arrows where you shoot at a triple arrow. You get a ricochet arrow where when you shoot this arrow, it sends like seven or eight arrows just out at the enemy. So you get all these different arrows that you're using and there's something that is just a little bit enjoyable about it, even though the enemy uh, intelligence is really lackluster. And also these medieval castles, like I said, they kind of repeat over and over again ad nauseum. So there does appear to be a lot of levels to this game. It appears this game has a lot of length, but a lot of this is this procedurally generated graphics, which does use these beautiful medieval castles and it does arrange them in a unique way but like I was saying earlier eventually one long hallway or one staircase that you're going up it all starts to blur into each other now the locomotion in this game is you can either use an arrow for teleport locomotion you hit a specific button to grab a specific arrow you shoot that arrow and that is where you teleport to but you can go into the options and you can turn on free locomotion which will allow you to just push your thumbstick and go in whatever direction you want. Now, obviously, I turned that on absolutely immediately, started using free locomotion, but there are certain areas in this game that you can't just walk to. You have to shoot your teleporting arrow to get to these other different areas. And so you'll be going through the game. You'll see a certain area over there. You can't walk to it. So you got to activate your teleporting arrow, you shoot your teleporting arrow to whatever area you're trying to get to, and then boom, you're instantly there. And then now you can use your free locomotion to get around, or you can also use teleport. So there is the mix and match between free locomotion and also teleporting. I do like this. I don't like games that only give you one option or the other. And if you choose like go anywhere locomotion, now teleport is completely removed. So I like the fact that they give you both options. But in this game, they're giving you both options for a very specific reason, because the only way you can get to certain areas is with the arrow teleporting. So ultimately, what is my final take on this game? Again, this is not a review. I've only played probably one full hour of this game. I haven't seen all of the enemy types. I haven't seen all of the various levels. But right now, what I would have to say is I would probably caution people out there on picking this game up. This is, again, it goes back to one of my takes where if this was April of 2016, this would be a game that everybody would be really into, but it isn't April of 2016. We're heading towards April of 2018. This is February 2018, and honestly, at this point, standards need to be raised. Now, having said all of that, there is a little bit of this comfort food uh, take that I have to this game from a standpoint of there's something familiar about this game and even though it's janky in a lot of regards it's actually relatively fun to still go ahead and play through it but you have to be playing the game with the understanding that the artificial intelligence of these enemies is really bad you're going to see a lot of repeating environments over and over again the music is kind of like doesn't really do a hell of a lot and uh, it, it's relatively mediocre, all things said, but 
but there is still something strangely satisfying about the game as well. So I'm not willing to throw the whole thing away. I kind of wish that this developer, so far Studios, like they have the basics for a pretty good game here, but they just need some artificial intelligence. They need probably a different set of, of enemy types. They need a little bit of story to be intertwined with this as well. I would probably, ultimately, I would probably say pick this game up on a really good sale. I don't know that I would jump into this game unless you're really desperate for some more archery action and you're really into archery games. The actual archery mechanics are relatively decent. I don't really have a problem with that. And there are some interesting weapons that you can get into as well. So anyway, that's pretty much going to go ahead and wrap it up for In Death. And that is also going to wrap it up for this episode of the VR Game Rankings Daily Vlog Series. Of course, this has been episode 90 for Friday, February 2nd, and I will see everybody on Monday. Take it easy. Later. Later.